Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about oxidation of alkynes. We're going to be learning three different ways how you can oxidize alkynes using uh, two, two, the first two ways are using k 4 potassium permanganate and then we're going to be looking at the, using ozone. So let's focus on first using uh, uh, potassium permanganate under neutral conditions, so, which means you're just going to have water in there. And these reactions are easy to kind of see what's really going to happen. Uh, you got to go ahead and uh, make a dicarbonyl in case of a KMNO4 under neutral condition. So make sure you count your carbons in the alkyne. So I got one, two, three, four, and five here. So I'm still going to have a five member chain there. And then um, you're going to have two carbonyl grips basically on the second and the third carbon. So wherever your triple bond was those two carbons going to be making the, their carbonyls and uh, obviously this is being done under gentle conditions um, if you do the same read but now under basic conditions or alkaline conditions then the products are going to be slightly different where you actually go ahead and break this triple bond and then now you're going to have two molecules and I can go ahead and draw those two molecules. So one of them is going to be what you have on the left side. So on that left side, you're going to have two carbons. And those two carbons are going to be making a carboxylate ion there. So I'm going to have a minus there. Because remember, you're doing it under basic conditions. You're not going to be protonating those yet. And then K plus there. And then plus the other side which we can clearly say it's going to be the right side here. So how many carbons you got on the right side of that? You're going to have three carbons there, one, two, and three. And uh, the result is still going to be similar. You're going to have carboxylate there. And the K plus there. And obviously, if I want to go ahead and protonate both of these guys, uh, and if you if you protonate those, I would use an acid. So let's say I use H3O plus just to protonate those. The results are going to be similar now, except you're not going to have the carboxylate, but you're going to have the H plus. You're going to have the carboxylic acids made now. So I'm just going to take this out here and we're going to have the hydrogens here. So I can do this reaction in two steps. The first step is obviously going to be the KMO4 under alkaline conditions and making these carboxylate ions but then eventually you can protonate you can work up the work up with the acidic conditions and make the carboxylic acids or you may see this reaction just being written something like this. So I have, you could go ahead and write in the first step, I got uh, KMNO4 under basic conditions. And then in the second step, you're going to be working it up with the acid there. So that's how it's going to look like. If you have both of those steps, one and two, then this is going to be your end result. But if you're just doing the KMNO4 uh, with the base, then you're going to be stopping at your um, carboxylate unless you are also doing the second step which is the protonation then when we look at this uh, ozonolysis uh, it's going to be very similar to that uh, hot cam in the, uh, to that basic cam in the four so what I'm really going to be doing is going to be breaking that away and uh, it's going to have very similar results you're not going to have to worry about uh, making alkaline uh, making carboxylate however so it's just going to be making uh, an acid here and then that's your obviously the left side and then you're going to be making the acid from the right sides so sometimes you have the same number of carbons on the left and on the right so you may see only one product being written but if you have a different number of carbons then you got to write both of those in there so this ozonolysis is going to be different than what you do in case of alkenes. In the case of alkenes, you make aldehydes and ketones, but here it kind of goes all the way down to the carboxylic acids. So 
the take home message here. So let's look at if I have this particular question, which is one view time here, and if I'm doing these three different reactions here, so under neutral conditions, this one butyne is going to be making dicarbonyl. So in one case, you have an a ketone and you're going to have you have an aldehyde here. So you can have these dicarbonyls being both of those either ketones or they could have one ketone, one aldehyde, or you may very well can have also both of those to be aldehydes. Then if you run this under basic conditions, so then I'm going to be going ahead and making these carboxylates here. And then um, K plus, and then there's only one carbon that's going to be on this right side here. Um, so that one is just going to be gone away as CO2. You're not really going to making a formic acid there. It just goes away as in a CO2 in that particular case. And if I just protonate that, uh, once you protonate it, this final product is going to be, it's going to write that, screws that in there. So it's just going to have an H there now. So then if I do with uh, O3 in water, your products are going to be very similar. So you're going to be making uh, this guy right there. That's still one of the products. And your second product is obviously going to be the CO2 there. And um, if that happens, the CO2 is made anytime you have only one carbon on one of the sides. Like in this case, uh, um, this carbon kind of stays by itself. So this one is just going to be one carbon. So this one carbon is not really going to be uh, making the formic acid, but instead it's just going to be gone away as carbon dioxide. So you may not see that in some of those reactions because it will just escape the solution, but that's how you're going to be making those. So think about this. This is one of the ways you can actually lose a carbon in the chain. So alkynes are used to make a carbon-carbon bond using SN2 reactions because so you can deprotonate that terminal alkyne and use that as an enucleophile. But now you learn now you can also get rid of one of those carbons from the chain by running this type of reaction there. So it's extremely important to know those things. All right, so this is uh, going to be the oxidation of alkynes. If you have any questions, feel free to leave any comments in the section below.